Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever played a chess game that was exceptionally bad? I'm talking like so bad that while it's happening, you just want to walk away from it. Or a game that you thought was not so bad, but when you looked at the game review afterward, you went, oh my god, why do I even play this game? This is absolutely ridiculous. Well, today's game is like the complete opposite of that. I was actually making a compilation of all of the brilliant moves of my subscribers and putting together a guide on how to get brilliant moves when somebody sent in this game. Now that video will come out separately, it's probably already out, unless you're watching in the first week of this video getting released and that video is not yet out. But this game was absolutely incredible. It featured a, a, a battle of intermediate level players, so 1400 and 1500. I don't know why it's from Black's perspective. Uh, let's go to White's perspective. Uh, and one of these players landed one of the most absurd combinations I have ever seen in my life. So this game, we're actually going to honor the subscribers. We are not going to be making fun of the subscribers in any way, shape, or form, okay, a little bit. Um, yeah, just enjoy this game. I mean, honestly, what more can I say? Um, white begins with e4, black responds with c5. Now, already I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit worried because the Sicilian defense is one of the most complex openings in chess, and... In the wrong hands, it can be a disaster. But we have an open Sicilian with d4, captures, captures, and the Nidorf. So the Nidorf is the most popular Sicilian actually across all levels. And it, it's common uh, for intermediate, even beginner level players to mimic kind of the, the openings that they see the most being played at Grandmaster level. The Nidorf seeks to commit the e pawn forward at some point. The counterplay will be with b5 if there is going to be counterplay. Uh, white plays the move bishop to e3, and here black in general will kick the white knight out of the middle of the board. It will move to either f3, e2, or b3. You really shouldn't go to f5. This is just a bad move. Black can capture and then take the middle right away. And when you retreat after your knight is attacked, black uh, begins kind of battling for this square. Bishop e7, bishop e6, the knight to d7, etc. In this game, Black already kind of demonstrates not very high-level understanding and plays the move b5 straight away. Now, I don't hate the move b5 on its own. It's not a losing mistake. Um, but White is already much better here uh, with, with even moves like a4, just, just making this pawn a target. Uh, because if the pawn moves forward, uh, the knight actually just jumps to d5. And, and remember, if White wins control of the d5 square in the knight, or if it's really difficult for Black to develop... Uh, white will then just build behind the pawn castle. You'll notice that black has all their pieces on the home squares, basically. So, um, yeah, you, you want to you wanna delay b5 for a while. The, the real point is that if, if white ends up castling queenside, then you'll play b5. But otherwise, b5 doesn't make any sense right away because you're launching an attack on grass. You know, you know what I mean? Like, if the king is, like, already there in his little castle, then you're going to launch an attack. But if it's just an empty field, what are you doing, right? Setting off fireworks in an empty field, that doesn't make any sense. Well, it does like in real life, because you avoid danger. But in chess, you're trying to like, you get what I'm saying? No, I should be quiet in my own YouTube video, probably. Anyway, queen d2. Um, but this doesn't really do it, because first of all, I'm pretty sure you can just play b4 now, and I mean, this pawn might hang. Uh, computer doesn't agree with me. It thinks that after knight e4, queen b4, white is okay. But just from a very elementary standpoint, this absolutely does not prevent the threat of, uh, of a potential b4. It's also not the best move, as you can see. <laughs> Machine thinks that definitely white has, uh, has not played this in the best of ways, as that pawn now comes under fire. White should have immediately went to target this pawn, but it's all right. Plays the move f3. This is very common. You'll notice that this is one of the most standard setups um, against the Sicilian defense. Bishop e3, queen d2 with a potential long castle. Now black plays e5. White plays knight back to e2, and now both sides castle. Okay, so with opposite side castling, uh, a massive attack is brewing. Uh, white is going to play g4, h4, g5, h5. Uh, black will try to play b4, a5, maybe move this knight out of the way. Definitely the rook is going to come down the c-file. That's the entire purpose of playing the Sicilian defense, really, is to have that open c-file. Maybe queen a5 at some moment, right? So th this is the general uh, play in this position, which is why I really like white's move g4. The computer wants white to play knight g3. Uh, it wants white to put the knight in front of the pawn, because, for example, if black just develops like a traditional knight or move, that knight is going to f5. And once that knight gets to f5, it pressures the king, but also it's threatening to take and take. At the end of the day, there is a weak pawn on d6, which is the reason why black wants to win the battle for the d5 square, 
because in a world where the d5 square was completely blockaded, then white would not have any sort of pressure whatsoever uh, on that pawn, which is why knight g3, knight f5 is another idea. Do I dislike the move g4? No, I absolutely love the move g4. Knight bd7, okay. Now in this position in particular, the move knight g3 once again is possible, and the idea is as follows. Uh, if you are going to be playing the move g5, you really do not want to get your pawns blockaded, okay? Unless you can remove that blockade right away with the move knight to g3. Like, that is the only acceptable reason, because if you just have a bunch of pawns like this, but black is able to totally blockade them, how are you, like, what are you doing? You, you can't even get through now, right? You're gonna have to now play bishop h3, bishop g4, and get rid of the blockade like that. But by then, black is arriving on the, que on, on the queen side. Like, now you have problems you have to deal with. And if you play too passively, all of a sudden I'm opening up the middle. If you're trying to get rid of my blockade still, all of a sudden I'm, I'm, I'm just smashing you on the queen side. In, in chess, time is everything. Time is precious. I mean, in life too, I suppose. Uh, but uh, yeah, in chess, I mean, you gotta be real careful. So when you go for a pawn storm, make sure that you cannot be easily blockaded. This is one of the reasons I really like covering intermediate level games, because there's, there's high level stuff here. Nobody's blundered a queen yet. Yet. G5. The knight moves to h5. And now, white should really seize this moment and play the move knight g3. Like, this is the moment you have to, like, you can't take your foot off the gas. What I think the reason was for not playing knight g3 is white calculated the following sequence. White probably went, well, black can go here, and then if I take and take and take, then I lose my queen, which is 100% correct. But let's learn something. Which of those moves was bad? Okay, this is not a terrible move. This is the mistake. If you get to this position in your head and just play knight f5, you're still doing very well. Because if black takes on g5, first of all, that opens up your rook. And second of all, you go queen d6, you win the pawn back immediately. This bishop has absolutely no window of attack. Rook g1, rook down to g7. I mean, you're smashing through here. And the knight is hanging. Let's not even forget about that, right? So um, when you calculate a, a move, you cannot discount it because at the end you lose a queen. But you didn't have to lose the queen, right? Also, you don't even have to take the knight. You could just play knight f5 immediately and get rid of this knight at a later moment with something like, for example, knight back to e2 and get this position. And this is amazing, right? You still have all the benefits of your position. So when you are calculating at an intermediate level, at an advanced beginner level, you can't not play knight g3 because you lose a queen. You can't lose the queen. Knight g3 is a very reasonable move. White plays an okay move. White plays king b1. When you castle queen side, a lot of the time, king b1 is going to be useful uh, because you need to defend your pawns against queen a5, b4. So if the knight is removed from the defense of your weak pawn here, the queen might get in, grab it, beat up your king. It's just always useful to play king b1, but it's really a do-nothing move. Like, you still need a plan. You can't play king b1 and king a1 and then fall off the map, right? So uh, black plays f6, which is just not... That's just not... That's just fundamental misunderstanding of the position. That's just a terrible move. What black should be doing here is playing the move b4. I mean, like, that's why you play b5, right? You can't be stagnant. Then if white plays knight a4, well, congratulations. Now you're getting your queen a5 business. You're getting your bishop c6 business. Notice how both sides are trying to blockade, right? Overarching theme of today's video, blockading a pawn storm. So black can immediately remove the blockade and take it, and knight c5, and go after, you know, queen a5, queen a4, and try to create some serious threats. f6, the golden rule is, unless you absolutely have to, do not push pawns where you're being attacked. It's just not the right decision. I mean, if anything, white can just take the pawn, and you just help me open up the position even more. Now, of course, what black wanted was to bring the knight back from the side of the board. But now I have rook g1, and knight g3, and bishop h3, and bishop e6, and knight f5, and queen g2, and queen g7 mate. Unfortunately, white doesn't get six moves in a row. White here still does not play knight g3 and plays the move g6. Uh, g6 is a very interesting move. On the surface, it straight up hangs a pawn. But I think what white wanted to do here was, unless white, like, again, I'm giving white the benefit of the doubt. Like, if white had 700 points less, I would say white just hung a pawn. But the point of g6 is that now there is a very clear target for the rook, uh, and here comes knight g3. Now this move is spotted, right? Again, if this capture occurs, this rook opening up is just way too powerful. 
these light squares to the king, too powerful. Queen coming, too powerful. Uh, and so after knight g3, black plays knight b6. White gets rid of the knight and plays rook g1, right? So white has a beautiful line of attack directly at the king. Black plays knight c4. On its own, that move is not terrible. What white should do right now is get rid of the knight with a tempo and just look around and go, where is black's attack? This is why black had to play b4. Because when you get this, where is black's attack? That bishop isn't attacking anybody anytime soon. Neither is this bishop. I mean, by the time black successfully builds up in a checkmating threat, that's been four or five moves. What white should do now is then play queen g2 or play bishop h6, right? There's like a lot of different attacking ideas here. Even, I wouldn't even hate knight d5. I mean, just go forward. Everybody's rolling forward here. But white gets fancy, right? I mean, like people can't, they can't help themselves. So queen g2, sacrificing a bishop into a queen and rook fork because that's mate. The problem with queen g2 is that there is rook f7 or even g5, but now white plays, bishop takes knight, pawn takes, and the rest of the game belongs to white. Queen h3, attacking the pawn on uh, h5 and, you know, potentially doubling up the rooks. Every one of white's pieces is playing. Black's pieces are hardly playing. Now black plays h4. I mean, that's literally a free pawn, but you can also double up. Rook d2, bishop back to c8, all right. I don't dislike the move bishop back to c8. All right, it's a nice idea, attacking the queen. Of course, the queen can just take the pawn, but this was black's point to open up the attack over here. But so far, a really, really high level game. Queen h5, f4, closing down the bishop. The bishop moves out of the way. Black plays rook to b8, lining up an attack on the b2 pawn. White gallops into d5. I mean, like I told you a long time ago, that d5 square, if that d5 square is won in the knight orf, it's bad news, all right? I'm gonna go move my bishop, go here. Uh, you know, black has some vague attacking ideas with queen a5, but look at this. I mean, black, black has five of six pieces on the back rank. And now white finds a way to even immediately take advantage of where that bishop once stood and plays bishop h4. All five of white's pieces are playing. That is uh, 19, 25 points of material angrily attacking the black king. Everybody in white's position is perfect. Literally, you cannot lose this game with white. Queen a5. Oh my goodness, incredible. Now, white's idea this whole time was to go here. That's been white's idea from the get-go. What white should do here is play one final consolidating move, at which point white will have no weaknesses whatsoever. And that move is the move c3. Now I know what I said, don't push pawns in front of your king, but you're not really being attacked here. Because this defends this, this defends that. I mean, everything is defended, right? Black might play bishop e6, trying to take the knight and then take on c3, but now here comes knight f6 and you just, I mean, you just win the game. Rook f6, bishop f6. By the time black arrives over here, you're bulldozing. Bishop g7, queen g6, it's just going to be mate. Like, I, there's nothing here. Everything is defended. Take the rook. If you take the rook, it's mate. So, we have here and here, and I mean, I mean, it, it's just, like, the, the game is, is just over. We, we have rook g6. But the game is not over. The fun is yet to begin. First of all, because black never, uh, because white never played c3, now, black plays c3 themselves, right? And starts creating some threats. But c3 is a terrible move. Because white can just play b3. And that's it. If you play queen a3 looking for queen b2 mate, I just grab the pawn. I just grab the pawn. You, you no longer get in. So c3 wasn't the move. Black had to play queen a3. And the idea of queen a3 is there is no b3. Because if you play b3, I take it. And then if you take it, I take it. And this is apparently a draw. Apparently, this is perpetual check. Uh, if you try to run the king over to e2, I give you a check. If you try to run the king over to f1, I actually sneak in with my bishop, and you can't escape, and it's just a draw. Incredible. So when you are losing, folks, you have to understand if the best moves in a position are a draw, you have to play for the draw. So queen a3 prevented b3, but instead we have c3, and now b3 for white wins the game on the spot. But instead of b3... White saw that they could get in and rook to h6 is played, okay? Rook to h6 is played. And you may notice that the evaluation just went all the way down to mate in 11. M11. The threat is rook h8 mate. 
And the craziest part about this position is it is not stoppable. You cannot prevent this checkmate for, bl for like, black cannot prevent white's mate unless black finds checkmate in 11. Everything else doesn't work. And it is absolutely incredible. Now, you're more than welcome to pause here and try to calculate this out to its conclusion. Um, here we go. Rook takes b2 check, but king c1, and now what? That's like, this is probably what white thought. White just went, I don't understand. Like, where's the mate? Well, here it is. Rook b1, brilliant move. You have to take. It's better than playing rook c2 because now the king can actually walk around the pawn. The king actually has more breathing room this way and there's no way for the queen to get to b2 and be defended with the pawn. So that is why rook b1 and then queen b5. And now queen b2 and now queen b1 and the king only has one move and queen c2. But I don't understand. The king could go over here, right? King e1, but now this check, not this check, although queen c1 actually would delay it, but queen d2. And remember, folks, I told you a long time ago, there was a piece on the black side. Yeah, all these pieces are delivering a mate very soon. Well, this one's not delivering a mate, but these two are definitely. And the bishop for black sneaks into h3, and white has no escape. Rook g2. Bishop! Oh, uh, 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 I'm gonna keep that in. Queen g2. I don't know why I said bishop. It's queen g2. <laughs> queen g2! King e1, and now pick your poison, folks. Queen d2 is mate. Queen f1 is mate. But black returns back to the scene of the crime with queen d2 checkmate in one move. An 11 move combination starting from c3. All white had to do was play b3 and not have any more problems, but goes for a glory force checkmate and gets hit with rook b2, rook b1, queen b5, queen b2, queen b1, queen c2, queen d2, bishop h3. Hoo -hoo! And a knockout of an 11 move forced checkmate. Bravo.